Welcome to part one of a two part series entitled Vimalakirti Vegan The Wise and Eloquent Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva Vimalakirti was a renowned lay disciple and wealthy patron of Shakyamuni Buddha. He is also the legendary figure of the teaching of Vimalakirti, a scripture that is included among the classic Mahayana sutras. His story, as well as the teachings recorded in the Vimalakirti Sutra, are important and highly respected in Buddhist history. The name Vimalakirti means pure reputation. Vimalakirti was a householder who lived in the ancient capital city of Vaisali in northeastern India some 2,500 years ago, now in the present day Bihar. He belonged to the influential Lichavi clan and was a successful businessman who was friendly with royalty and scholars. He was also a kind and giving philanthropist. He lived in luxury, but his heart was not bound to the mundane world. With his riches, Bimalakirti generously helped the less fortunate. Nothing he had, be they material nor the name and fame, could ever possess him. He was universally loved, respected, and adored. Everything Vimalakirti did was in accordance with Buddha's teachings and to spread Dharma to people at all levels, leading them to liberation and enlightenment. In his lively and magical ways, he taught people to see through the traps of religion and seek the ultimate truth in spiritual practice. He would show up in taverns to teach the drinkers about mindfulness and went to brothels to educate people about abstaining from sensual indulgence. For several incarnations, Vimalakirti had dedicated himself to serve the previous Buddhas. He learned the Dharma from the Buddhas face to face, receiving the full penetration of their teachings and attained enlightenment. He had the power of a great Bodhisattva and was gifted with superb eloquence. He knew the strengths and weaknesses of sentient beings to help present them with spiritual teachings. Supreme Master Ching Hai has mentioned V. Malakirti and the V. Malakirti Sutra several times, including during a 1994 lecture in Thailand. One of his foremost disciples was V. Malakirti, and he was a lay, rich person. He has never left home, never shaved his head, never became a monk. But all the monks of the Buddha were afraid of him because he was very, very uh, highly uh, awakened, almost near to the Buddha, Buddhahood. So whenever the monks or anyone visited uh, Vimalakirti, they were very respectful and very, uh, very aware of his spiritual power. Vimalakirti benefited sentient beings by setting himself as an example and encouraging others to follow his practices. His ample merit brought him inexhaustible prosperity. He practiced the perfection of concentration and rested his mind one-pointedly in the union of shamatha, which translates to the tranquility of the mind, and vipassana, meaning to see things as they really are. He tamed beings who were restless or easily troubled by dullness and agitation. He ascertained emptiness with his wisdom and guided many beings with his insights on the selflessness of persons and of phenomena. Let's take a moment to thank heaven for gracing us with so many beautiful, joyous days filled with divine wisdom. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Bimalakirti, Vegan, The Wise and Eloquent Bodhisattva, Part 1 of 2. Although Bimalakirti could enjoy all kinds of superb delicacies, he had no attachments to them. What he truly savored was the joy of meditation, which was his fundamental sustenance. When he frequented gambling parlors and public places of entertainment, it was because he felt a need to make connections with beings in those places and to educate them. As a government official, 
V. Malakirti worked for the well-being of the people rather than for profit, showing the rulers how to detach from the desire for power. V. Malakirti participated in government administrations in courts, juridical departments, and prisons as an officer who created laws and regulations. The reason was to safeguard everyone with justice and law enforcement and help people to enjoy their legal rights and obtain fair treatment. Observing all the disciplines, V. Malakirti was completely untainted by naturally negative acts and downfalls that violate the Buddha's edicts. The V. Malakirti Sutra states, he protected and corrected those who broke the precepts without despising or deserting them, since they were actually quite pitiable themselves. The Sutra also tells how V. Malakirti, using skillful means, manifested becoming ill himself, prompting people to come forward inquiring after his health, so he could take the opportunity to impart the Dharma to his well-wishers. There are 14 relatively short chapters in the scene of V. Malakirti's discourse with a large assembly of bodhisattvas and Buddhist disciples during their visit to him. Through the dialogues with his visitors, he challenged their understanding and gives them instruction of true dharma. He taught that everything is an illusion and all beings are equal. Vimalakirti then expounded to his visitors that the physical body is ephemeral and subjected to ailment and deterioration. Instead, we should be concerned with the body of the dharma that is born with wisdom and compassion. He told the crowd that the Dharma body can be developed and evolved through lifetimes of spiritual cultivation, leading all beings to eternal peace. Everyone who heard his speech was heartened and felt more encouraged, sincerely vowing to develop the wonderful body of the Buddha in themselves. In the beautiful and serene Amrapati Park in the city of Vaishali, Shakyamuni Buddha was teaching the dharmas to a big assembly. Marveled by the spectacular miracles that Buddha showed them, the crowd were encouraged to pursue transcendence and liberation to the pure Buddha field, the wonderful, impeccable, beautiful, free, happy, and pure land that everyone is longing for. When Lord Buddha learned that Vimalakirti was unwell, Buddha knew the reason he feigned illness. Buddha tried to send an envoy to inquire after Vimalakirti's health, but one after the other, ten of his most distinguished disciples politely declined the request. From the venerated Saraputra, to the venerable Madhgalyana, Lord Buddha's son Rahula, to the venerated Ananda, and even the worship Maitreya Buddha, they each expressed why they were intimidated to visit Vimalakirti. The disciples felt they were not qualified to make the call. Recounting their previous encounters with V. Malakirti, they described how they were all daunted by his sharp realization and superior eloquence. The key message of this scenario is that lay practitioners like V. Malakirti can become highly accomplished and that monastic practitioners should never look down upon lay practitioners. Many lay individuals have achieved high levels of realization and thus are worthy objects of respect. Finally, the worship Prince Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of Supreme Wisdom, accepted Buddha's request and made his way to see V. Malakirti. Joining Manjushri were other disciples, Bodhisattvas, gods and goddesses, all excited to witness the meeting. V. Malakirti then used his supernatural power to empty his house of furniture and staff. Upon arrival, Manjushri first inquired about V. Malakirti's ailment, to which he responded that his sickness arose from the great compassion of a bodhisattva to all living beings. If all living beings are well, he too would be free from illness. V. Malakirti's selflessness is truly enlightening and a guiding light as we travel on this earth, illuminating the path to God for all brothers and sisters. With gratefulness in our hearts, we look forward to learning more about this extraordinary bodhisattva 
in part two of this series. Noble viewers, it has been a pleasure to have you with us today. Join us again on Sunday, August 23rd, for part two of Bhimalakirti, Vegan, the Wise and Eloquent Bodhisattva.